And we're live. Awesome. Welcome to Dylan Talks Tone and the live Q&A that we do every week. Uh, as you will see, to my right and your left, uh, <laughs> we have somebody who looks a lot like Leslie. Uh, what do they say? You are her progeny. I think that's... Prodigy? prodigy? No, 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 not prodigy. No, no, no. It's, yeah, the... Clone. Offspring of clone. <laughs> uh, so Leslie's not feeling very good tonight. And Brianna said, you know, uh, this is my daughter, Brianna, by the way. For those of you that are new to the channel, or maybe you are new to Brianna. She's been in a few videos, and she's going to be in some more stuff. We're going to talk about that probably a little bit later. Um, she is helping me out around here a bunch. And she said, well, why don't I just do the live stream with you tonight since mom's not feeling well? So here we are. Uh, that also does mean that we have, uh, Leslie's in bed. She's not feeling well. So that also means we have no one to manage dog noise. So if you hear dog clicks, <laughs> if you hear dog toys, you're just going to have to deal with it because it's just kind of, you get it right. Progeny. Kind of just the way we roll, uh, tonight is just going to be dealing with dog noises and teaching Brianna how to, Hey dude, put it on the carpet. Like literally, um, uh, teaching Brianna how to use the software and do a live stream because she's never done this before. So uh, this is going to be fun. So when we get into the off topic hour later on after nine o'clock, if you have any off topic questions for Brianna, you're welcome to ask her that. Uh, we have some things to talk about. Before we get on uh, with all that stuff, I want to mention Dylan Talks Tone, our electronic parts section. Um, this is something that we're really excited about. Uh, Brianna and I both, because she's actually managing a lot of that inventory. And if you order caps and pots and switches and stuff like that, chances are she's the one that actually packed your order. So she's helping me out a lot with the, with that stuff, uh, lately. So, uh, keep an eye on the Dylan Talks Tone electronic parts section of the website, because it's going to continue to grow. We're actually going to add, um, we're actually going to add pick guards. Oh, really? Like plain pick guards. So okay. Telecaster pick guards, Stratocaster pick guards. And I'm even working on a loaded Jazzmaster setup. And people have been asking me for that. So we're Where doing are those a... gonna live. Not in there. Nope, because they're gonna see in some videos over the next few weeks mm -hmm. the expansion. Oh, okay. Because okay, okay. we are going to have to expand that direction. Yeah. Right? That's part of your Pegboard. That's part of the plan okay. for the garage. So we are doing a bunch of expansion. Uh, we've lived here a month and we are already outgrowing the space because we are expanding stuff. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, I also want to mention Texas Toast Guitars. We just watched their live stream. Those guys are awesome. Um, if you order a guitar from there, just put Dylan Talks Tone in the comments. I don't know what it does, but Matt told me to do it. So I think what it is, is he's just trying to track who refers, yeah, you know, people to him. So, um, you know, I, I make the pickups, but I, I, you know, that's, so it does benefit me, I guess, in a weird way, but not like a, a normal thing. So I just wanted to mention that. Uh, oh, we got a super chat. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Oh, let me hit the button. All right. What did he say? And then you click right there. There? Yep. Oh, <laughs> What do you say? Says Tony Leonardi. Yep. Says good evening, Brianna and Dylan. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you for the super chat, Tony. And you might have heard uh, that your guitar is on your way to me. I believe I am getting it tomorrow. And we are going to do some really neat Stevie Ray stuff. We're going to dive into some Stevie Ray nerdiness with that guitar before I ship it to you. Which means I guess I need to make those pickups. But we got to do that on video. So we'll we'll be doing that. We have a lot of video content to make over the next few weeks. So Brianna is actually going to be helping me with that too, because she'll be holding the camera and doing <laughs> some various stuff. Cause we're just going to be pounding. Through, yeah. Pounding through content. Cause we have a lot of stuff to do. Um, all right. Well, I'll tell you what, let's get into, if you have questions tonight, um, put a bunch of question marks in front of it so that Brianna can catch it. Be patient. We're all learning together tonight. Oh, we have another super chat from Chris Hendricks. Digging the new mics. Grats on the growth. Cheers. Thanks, man. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate that. Yeah, we are growing. We are definitely growing. Um, you have to turn the other one off first. Isn't that what I did? 
Oh, there it oh, goes. You okay, did. There okay, you okay. Go. And we got a super sticker. That's what that thing is. Oh. See how it's a okay, little okay, different okay. color? Yeah. All right. Patrick Jean LeBlanc Hardy. Pair character punching the air with fist and bump written on his knuckles. Yeah, so that's one of those stickers that you can buy. And mm -hmm. we don't see it on here because we don't have the normal YouTube, but it's the little graphic and it's like a little oh, yeah, okay, it's okay, a little okay, cartoon. Okay. Okay. okay it's okay. a little cartoon. So yeah, man. Well, very cool. Let's um let's go ahead and get into our super or into our Patreons. Patreon questions. And let's let's get into these because we're gonna talk about pickup selection tonight. Go ahead. Wait, that's already the one. Yep. There you go. Okay. Really love seeing the Texas Toast videos. The pickup winding one really resonated how much skill and experience goes into that. Would like to order a loaded S pick guard with some vault pickups in it. Does it work to do P90 neck hot strat super eight bridge for hard rock or punk guitar? Ooh, a P90 neck and a hot strat in the middle and a super eight bridge. That is a crazy combination. Um, It would look funny, but if you're into it, I would do the Enduro in the neck. I wouldn't do a regular P90. Um, and then maybe a Hot 5 in the middle and a Super 8 in the bridge would be kind of cool, actually. You'd have, kind of have best of all worlds. You'd have some single coil stuff, but not conventional. So it would literally be a single, single hum with a different flavor in the neck position. And I think that's a really neat idea that I've never actually thought of before. So thanks for bringing that up, Robert. Um, and that's something that we could do, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want both. There you go. Okay, there we go. I'm getting there. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Thank you, Robert. Okay, 67 goat, neon green player strat comes today. I already ordered pickups for it because I already have a player strat with those pickups. No need for two. But I bought an Epiphone Purple Sparkle Flying V. ZZ sound, Zounds exclusive. Mm -hmm. I already have a V with Pro Buckers in it, so I need new pickups for this V. Should I go 60s, 70s rock as the basis for new pickups or something crazy like a non sequitur? Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> Lawler Novel Gold Foils. Hmm. So uh, I guess that depends what you're into. If it was me with a V... I would put a set of DAFs in it or I would put it actually, no, I would put a set of super eights in it because I would want it to be a little hotter than conventional uh, because it's a V and it's rock and roll. So I would put uh, something a little hotter. So I would say super eights. That would be my, my jam. Um, that's what I would do. We have another super chat. Yep, so that's the one that's on. See how it's Okay, wider. okay, okay. There you go. This is the super chat. Hang on, let me make the noise. Okay. okay, go. Super chat from Sarge978. Hey, Brianna, hope I spelled it right. You did. And Dylan, posted my questions pretty late. I hope I got it under the wire. If not, I'll super chat it later. I, you did not get it in under the wire because I did not see yours. But uh, if I get my phone out, we can probably check really quick let's do that right now and see if sarge most of the people on here are actually spelling my name right yeah no that's great <laughs> i think <right>? it's awesome <laughs> yeah okay oh here it is okay sarge 978 sorry this isn't going to be on the screen because we did get it in a little bit late um i know i've mentioned having my eye on imperials slash dafs before lawler imperials are also a very good choice uh, in my opinion how versatile would you say both are as far as being able to pull off a range of styles i love everything from the likes of skinner to zeppelin to my current uh revisit and love of stone gossard sound on the album 10. From what I've seen and heard, they both sound great, but I don't have the ear to know what kind of sound spectrum they'll shine best and want to spend the money on something I'll be happy with. Thanks in advance for the insight. Um, Stone Gossard, I can totally identify with. So um, I would say that on that album, he used the Les Paul, I think. Um, I would say that Imperials and DAFs would both get you there. It has been my experience that Imperials hit the amp relatively hard. So 
If you have a very low wattage amp, DAFs will be a little more versatile. If you have a lot of power and you want to drive that amp, Imperials may work too. So you could go either way. Obviously I'm gonna be biased towards the stuff that I make. However, if anybody ever asks me, if you were gonna buy a humbucker that wasn't your DAF, what would it be? The immediate answer is Lawler Imperials. I absolutely love them. So you can't go wrong with either one. Um, I had them in a telly before and I really, really liked them. Um, they're a fantastic pickup, but it's they do hit the amp pretty hard though. So as far as getting, I mean, they'll be very clean, but you'll have to have the headroom to do it. That, at least with my rigs that I had at the time, that's what I found. So just to give you a little kind you have of another background. Super chat. Oh, another super chat. Okay, go. This is from Stupid Guitar. Just wanted to give you props for your pickup winding vid at Texas Toast. A patient and clear teacher is hard to find. Good job. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, I really love doing those. I love doing those pickup winding classes. It is so fun to teach people how to do it. You know how to do it. I do know how to do it. Yep. Her brother knows how to do it. Um, Leslie's only wound one pickup, I think. Yeah, yeah, but she can do it. She can do it. Yep. But y'all have one wound a bunch. Like you guys are yeah. pretty proficient. And um, yeah, I think we've we've taught like 30 people to wind pickups now. Uh, it was really fun. I really it's enjoyed it. Like oddly peaceful. Mm -hmm. When you don't break a wire. <laughs> yeah. Once once you get to the point where you're not worried every moment about breaking the wire and mm -hmm. you can kind of just relax and kind of zen out, mm -hmm. it's kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah, because no, like agree. I listen to music, you listen to music, mm -hmm. and Bryson what watches movies? I think he watches YouTube and stuff, yeah, when he's winding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, her brother. So yeah, no, that's um I yeah. think this is the next one. All right, let's do it. Hi, Dylan and Leslie. I know you don't make active pickups, but what would you recommend for a stingray base? Dude, um, I don't know yet. I I want to make passive pickups for a stingray. I own a Sterling Stingray, and I did not and have not had until today the technology to make the parts for a Stingray base. I'm so excited to see what we do with it. Thing. I know. <laughs> so uh, this will give us a little sigu into telling uh, you about my new toy that I bought today. You probably have seen it on Instagram or on uh, Facebook or wherever, if you're on those various uh, social medias. Before your segue, we have another super chat. Okay, go for it. I need you to hit the button. Oh. Go for it. Okay. This one is from Doc Siltanen. Doc Siltanen. Siltanen. Okay, okay. This is the dentist. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I second the patient teacher comment. There is no way I could have learned it without your help. Thanks, Doc. And he actually has his own winder now, and he like winds his own pickups. We oh, actually have awesome. some of his pickups in the shop over there. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, they're very cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Awesome. And thank you for the super chat. And Doc, I wanted to mention, uh, I did not make it to the liquor store before the show tonight. I forgot. We've had a lot going on, this week. and yes, Mom did remind you. She did remind me twice, actually, <laughs> and we have had a lot going on. So, siguing back to what we were talking yes. about a minute ago. Um, I bought a laser. So the reason I didn't get to the liquor store today uh, was because, um, and for those of you that might wonder what that has to do with anything, Doc actually sent me a gift about a week ago and said, go to the liquor store and get yourself something nice. Mm -hmm. Buy yourself something nice. So um, I didn't. <laughs> because I've been so busy. And um, so today uh, I bought a 100 watt 28 by 36 CO2 laser. It is huge. It weighs. That is an understatement. Yes. It weighs. Well, I'll tell you a funny story. <laughs> I told the moving company who was going to move it for me that it weighed 400 pounds. But I forgot that everything was in metric. 
So it actually weighed 400 kilos. So I didn't tell them that until after. Oh, actually, I didn't tell you them. You didn't tell them at all. I didn't tell them at all. Uh, Cause I was like, I better not tell them before I pay. Cause like, I don't want them to, you know, charge me more. Um, but anyways, so they, um, there was a local maker space here, uh, business incubator that I was actually a part of way back when I first started Dylan talks tone. And, um, they had, uh, this, this laser and they, they were, you know, it's like an $8,000 laser. And, um, they're a nonprofit. And he said to me last week, well, actually I was on the plane coming back from Colorado and I saw a post about it on Facebook. And he told me what he needed for it. And I was like, sold. So what he told me to do was make a donation right. to the nonprofit uh, in exchange for the laser. So I thought that was pretty cool. So that's what we did. And um, now we have it. Yeah, because yeah. I got a text like before you, I was even awake yep. after he bought the I was laser. Like, Guess like, what? I we bought, bought a laser. <laughs> yeah, because we have been talking about this. Well, for those of you that follow a lot of our stuff, you know that we've been really talking about this laser thing for quite a while. So um, this is something that we want to do. And in fact, I was going to put it off because mm -hmm. it's a lot of money and because we just moved and we've got a lot of things going, but this deal kind of came up and I couldn't pass it up. So we now own a laser and I'm really excited. We ordered a bunch of stuff to reorganize the garage. We're going to put some cabinets in, some um, assembly line space out there. We're actually going to make it into a full service laser shop. Uh, so stay tuned because um, that's going to be her gig. So I'm yeah, so yeah, it's going to be awesome. Let's get uh, through some more of these. I think, I'm trying to think of which one's next. I think it's this uh, one. Estathios? No, not that one. This one? Yep. Yes. Okay. What did it, how did you say it? Estathios. Okay. It's a Greek, like a Greek name. I, I know I would butcher it. Yep. Hello, Leslie and Dylan. I can't believe that in the dual p90 pickup guitar the metal position is generally wired in parallel hopefully reverse round reverse polarity, polarity. Mm -hmm. for a humbucking effect does it make sense to wire the middle position in series instead effectively creating a wide actual humbucker what do you gain and or lose by doing this i love this idea i think it is amazing last week at texas toast guitars we did this with somebody's guitar and it sounded awesome you just have to get the right um, cause it does, it sounds like a big, uh, humbucker and with P nineties, it's really actually super cool. Um, I like the middle position of parallel though. So if it was me, I would put a switch that makes it to where you can go back and forth. Cause I, I personally wouldn't want to lose the parallel part. We have another super chat. Awesome. From Sarge. Okay, go. <laughs> From Sarge nine, seven, eight. For context, really just home use these days on a Fender Mustang GTX 50 watt boo for apartment living. Correct in thinking Imperial low wounds or DAFs for my purposes. Um, in that case, I would actually do DAFs, not just because they're mine, but because they're awesome. Also because um, they are lower output and easier to do various things with in that situation. That's what I would go for. And thank you for the super chat, Sarge. All right. Oh, Sarge is the one that was talking us talking to us about pythons. That's the guy. Yeah. Okay. 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 So we may want to talk to you. Hit us in the send us an email because we bought one, but we want another one. So send us an email or get on the website and send us a chat. Maybe we can talk about, we'll talk about snake stuff in the off topic hour, but just while you're here, just, just know that, that we're kind of into it. Okay. Next Patreon. Fat hand question for tonight. After pressing in frets on a straight neck and fret rocker reveals no high frets, is it still necessary to level them with Sharpie and abrasive on a flat bar? It seems odd to abrade new frets just to have to remove the scratches and abrasions. If it was already level, is there a way to see if all frets are level without abrasion and re-crowing? -crow Crowning. Okay. He meant re-crowning. Okay. Yeah. I watched your cool video about doing frets the right way and squirrel chaos at Texas Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool and funny. Looking forward to more like those. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Fat Hand. So here's the thing. You can't actually get the frets as flat as you want, number one. And number two, 
most frets, well, I guess all frets, do not have enough of a crown on them to be there. Let's just say they are made to be crowned. So the shape of the top of the fret will be too round um, if you just leave it alone. So they're made to be crowned. Not only that, even if you were to quote unquote fret rocker the whole thing and they would come out pretty straight, you're still gonna end up with one or two. It's never gonna be totally, totally perfect. And the only way to get them really, really right is to level and crown them. Um, but the other thing, to, again, is the crowning part, the frets are not crowned from the factory. So what that means is that if, even if we think about the fret being the shape more or less of the back of this microphone, right, round, we want the fret to actually kind of have a peak on it. And that's what a crowning file does. Because you don't want the, the note to be like a variable from here to here. You want it to be on a finer point so that the note intonates properly because you could actually push on this fret and have it here or here, the note wouldn't be in tune both times. So you put a point on the top of it and it only presses down here. So you want it a little sharper and that's what the crowning does. That's why it's called crowning. Um, and so your guitar will be more accurate, your notes will be better, um, cleaner and more in tune. And that's, that's why. Okay, we have another super chat. Okay, go. From Desi Jimenez. Thank I think. you. Have you ever added an active circuit to a guitar like a Demeter? Demeter? Fat Boost a la a James Tyler Super Strat. Um, I have played with that stuff uh, uh, for other people. I don't really have an interest in doing it my for my own personal guitars. I have put active circuits in other guitars for other people. Um, do your research before you purchase them. If you just buy a cheap one off of eBay or somewhere, they can be a little noisy. So just do your research. Um, and that's where you don't want to cheap out. Um, because some of that's, like I said, some of that stuff can be kind of noisy. Okay, we have another one. Okay, go. From Keith H. On a pickup, one white wire, one black. Does the black just ground on the back of the pickup? Yes, usually. Um, that's how we do it, unless we're doing it with like a four-way situation where we put an extra wire so that you can ground the cover separately. Okay, so back to Patreon. Um, that You're going to be way down here somewhere. No, I scrolled. Oh, did you? Yeah, that was the next one. No, it wasn't. No, Alive. it's way down here. Uh, I think... Mason. Okay, no, because we did fat hand last, and oh, then we okay. went to super right. chats. Yep, you're right. You're right. You're right. Robert, hello, Leslie and Dylan. Will Born's potentiometers. Will Born's potentiometers pots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> be added to your site for purchase. If so, will they become become an option for wiring kits such as the LP package? Thank you. We are working on that. Um. We have been spending, I'm not even going to lie to you, we've been spending $1,000 a week on inventory right now trying to get this whole thing going, and it has been very expensive. We just ordered the stuff today to add long shaft pots for Les Paul style kits. Um, we're working on a bunch of stuff. Um, we are currently out of room to do much more <laughs> inventory expansion. So... That is a project that is happening this weekend, next weekend, and the week following. Um, I just realized that we kind of have to put off some of the stuff in the garage because I ordered the floor. So we can't hang the cabinets. What are you going to do with the counter? I, well, it's all going to sit there until in a big pile until the flooring comes. Is it getting installed or are we no, installing we're doing it? So we ordered um, race deck flooring for the garage so that we would have, so we can walk around in our socks and keep Speak everything clean. Speak for yourself, clean. barefoot. Or barefoot. So yeah, but that's coming in. So. Okay. Very cool. 
Next Patreon, Mason Gamer. Hey, Dylan. So I bought a neck position, Seymour Duncan. Seymour Duncan. Seymour Duncan Black Winter Pickup. The mm -hmm. wire was too short, so I spliced the same style of wire that I bought from Stumac. It is not working. What can I do? Will I need to completely replace the wires? Thanks. Um, so a Seymour Duncan Black Winter is an active pickup. Do you have your power... Your positive and your negative coloring correct. Um, otherwise, I don't know why it would be not working. But with an active pickup, you just got to make sure everything's wired right. So hopefully you didn't get any colors mixed up. Um, but it should work to just solder it on and make it longer. It should. Ready? Unless there's other damage somewhere else. All right, Vincent, in case I don't get to ask Matt directly, I also left this question on your video. Does Matt have to round fret ends to take off any burrs after leveling and crowning? I would have thought the crowning file would make it the domed portion sharp again. Ooh, good question. So what he's asking about is, so we'll use the end of our microphone again. So on the end of the fret right here, first the first thing you do is you sand it off flat. Then you put a bevel on it. And then you take that that burr off of the end of the fret right here and the little nibs down here on the bottom. Then you crown it. You level in it, crown it. Um, if you use a cheap file, it will leave a burr. If you use a Stumac file, it will not leave a burr because they are diamond files. Um, we use Z files and Z files don't actually um, old school crowning files are actually round like this. Um, and they, they don't peak the fret the same way. And so when you use a Z file, it actually, uh, and if you do it right and you kind of roll it off the edge, it retakes care of the edge itself again. So it'll re hone it. So you'll, you'll run your file. Like you don't just do it in a straight line like this. You run the file and you kind of roll off as you do it. You go like this and you come back and forth, this, come back and forth, this, come back and forth. And when you crown a file, when you crown a fret with a Z file, I, you probably make five or six passes this way, flip the file over, five or six passes, and you're done. One of the things that people do is they overfile their frets and they can run into reshaping the ends of the frets and have to fix all that stuff. But if you just do it just enough, which is less than you think, you won't have to have that problem. I don't think. Nope. That uh, was you, right? Yes. Uh, yes. So that's going to be so off topic is, stuff okay. for after nine o'clock. So let's okay, go back so over then we're good there, there and see if we can find any questions in here. Are yep. we caught up on Super Chats? We are, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So non-Patreon yeah, questions. Don't put these ones on the screen. Okay. Yeah. We just read them. So Curtis Chavez says, how does the sound of a fired bird pickup different from the sound of a mini humbucker? Also, how does floating a pickup change its sound or response versus building it into the body? Thank you. Um, body mounted pickups versus uh, pick guard mounted pickups or ring mounted pickups. It doesn't make any difference. Um, there is a bunch of people that are going to argue this point. Let me say that it will make it makes no measurable difference. If you want to make it up, and if you want to say it is different, uh, and you can anecdotally say, "Well, I have a guitar and I changed it," okay, fine, that's cool. If you want to believe that, that's good. It's totally fine. Um, I have no problem with that. Um, do whatever makes you feel good. Don't worry about it though. Don't stress about it. Don't design a guitar in particular way because blah, blah, blah. And don't listen to Paul Reed Smith if he said something different than this. Just literally play the guitar and don't worry about it. It will still sound good. Um, as far as the other part of the question, uh, what, I'm going back. <laughs> what was it? Um, does it change? Does floating oh. a pickup change? Oh no, sound? we're talking about mini humbuckers versus uh, versus Firebird pickups. Um, 
they do sound different because they have uh, many humbuckers are going to be not as hot. They have less magnet. The magnet is further from the strings and there is usually less windings too. So they're usually not as hot. Let's see. Patrick Jean LeBlanc Hardy says, have you seen my question on the member page? Uh, I did see your question on about uh, wanting to buy a pickup. Uh, and when you get ready to order it, just send me a message and we will sort it out. 67 goat other options for less Paul wiring. I have a fifties modern coil split, but too many less Paul shaped objects without much electronics differences other than pickups. So this is a funny thing. I want to do a video about it. I'm not really a fan of like a bunch of different switchy stuff. Um, if you have a bunch of less Paul shaped objects, then maybe just set them up a little different from each other. But other than that, I, I'm not a big one to put 21, whatever. I don't care about that stuff. So I'm not going to be a good one. Uh, chat amongst yourselves. Uh, if there's anybody who has a better idea for 67 goat, because I, I'm not going to suggest a whole bunch of different weird switching schemes. It's just not my jam. So kind of bouncing backwards. Mm -hmm. um, Jason Albert says, you'll have to let him know when there's a rebuttal in the comments, black winters and passive. Oh, black winters are passive. I guess I was wrong. Okay. What am I thinking of then? Okay. Keep going while I look this up. Thanks, Jason. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. I would have missed that entirely. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, what am I thinking of? My friend <laughs> designed them and he designed. Okay. So these are, yeah, this is not what I was thinking. Vinny's world said, thanks. That's what I was going to ask Matt as well. Whether he uses the Z file to roll over the edge. That's very helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. He uses the Z file. I'm going to do a video about the part that I missed while we were trying to get the squirrel out of the shop, which was that part. So I will do a video about that. Um, okay. Are you ready or no? Um, as far as the, so circling back to the Seymour Duncan black winter broken wire thing if it's not working it sounds to me like either you have some wires mixed up or there's something other broken in that pickup okay now i'm ready i'm catching back up sorry geez those are cheap 218 bucks a set okay brian says any recommendations for a neck humbucker that goes for a great dinosonic sound thinking that julian lange clean sound Ooh. Ah, uh, yeah. So our Enduro would be amazing for that, but that's a single coil. Um, and our DAF would be amazing for that as well as our smoothie. Our smoothie is going to have a little less high end because we use a little different gauge wire, but it's wound like a DAF, like a normal vintage PAF, but it just cuts a little bit of the high end off for those of you that like that. Touch darker tone, clarity still, touch darker. Okay, so Martian Murray, are Alanico two magnets warmer, and is that an option you offer? Um, we have Alanico two magnets in our Thruxton humbuckers. Um, they just break up a little different. Um, they uh. They just compress a little differently. I don't know that they're warmer. Warmer is a kind of a dumb word to me when it comes to that stuff because you can tune or play the thing however you want. But they do compress a little bit differently. I'm bouncing back and forth. No, that's okay. You were thinking of the Simon Duncan blackouts, which are their actives. Is the what blackouts, said. not the black winters. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Rick Nelson said, Hey Dylan, at the Texas Toast Guitar Ultimate Build last week, do you know how long our truss rods were? I got sidetracked talking about carbon fiber. I do not. I do not know how long they were. Rick New Nelson was a dude with the Mohawk. <laughs> okay. I know who that is. 
New Gun Guy says, will you be experimenting with dummy coils? Um, it's on my list to make a video about. We are actually going to be making a video about that very shortly because um, Tony Leonardi's Strat that's coming back from Texas Toast um, is going to get some Stevie Ray stuff. So we're going to dive into some dummy coil with that guitar. I'm bouncing back and forth. No, you're good. You're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Doc Silton and said 17 and a quarter inches for Rick. Oh, okay. Doc would know. Uh, Doc would know because I think he uses the same ones. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Chris Hendricks said, is she the queen of lasers? <laughs> lasers. MRX1776 says, will you ever make a seven string pickup? Um, yes, that is on the list too. Um, when we get to it and when we can have some time. Yep. We don't actually have a, a lot of interest in that stuff usually. Let's see. Baritone guitar, humbucker size, single coil, or humbuckers from Mr. Goat. Um, humbucker. Humbucker. Or a P90, but you said humbucker size, so humbucker. Thanks, Jason. He said I'm doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Benjamin Cardenas said two interlocking Z coils in a wide range humbucker form factor. Anyone? Um, uh, no, I don't like those. Um, I spent some time with that guy who came up with that Z coil thing. It's pretty neat, but it's, it's, it's honestly a solution in search of a problem. I just did never really thought why would I spend this much money for this pickup? Why would I complicate anything like that? I it's just I don't know. It's just too, too overcomplicated in my opinion. But that's that's my opinion. You know what I mean? Sarge nine seven eight says, "What's in the glass?" Uh, this is, I think, Laviolin sixteen. Rot block, rot box. Is there any, is there an advantage one away or the other, one way or the other, to flipping the pickup or just reversing wires on a single, sing, la, 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 on a center single coil to reverse the polarity? Well, you can't flip the pickup, so you have to reverse the wires. Um, if you just turn the pickup around, that doesn't do anything. And you can't flip it upside down because it won't fit. So you have to reverse the wires. Unless you have a magnet cool machine like I have and you can flip the actual magnetic polarity. Um, or if you have a pair of magnets and you can do that. But um, most people don't. So you just flip the, flip the wires. I think at the moment we're good. Really? Didn't miss a super chat. Well, dang. That's not for us. Mr. Goat says, hello, Dylan Talks Tone fam. Hope you have all been well. We have, except for Leslie. She's not feeling good. I don't know what. You weren't feeling good earlier either. It was must have been something at lunch or something. Tried to kill us. Yeah. You bounced us. back, though. I did. And mom was just, like, not feeling well. So I don't know what happened. But anyway. Mm -hmm. And she, oh, you know what it is? Mm -hmm. She was doing taxes this morning. Oh. That made her sick, mm -hmm. probably. Yep. Should have made me sick. <laughs> I know. Yeah. She's the one with the tax bill. Oh, God. Yeah. The server bartender over here probably is going to pay more taxes than we are this year. It's kind of crazy. <clears throat> you I, still made it, I don't it, love it. I did. It's just the number I have to come up with it today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'll be all right. You'll make it. It'll be fine. Ugh. I'm just going to be like, I need some <laughs> extra bartending chips. Yeah, it'll be fine. Um, Dog Dr. Tim says, as should be with good whiskey, 
it looks like two fat fingers, my kind of drink. Oh yeah. I um I pour the I pour the fingers and then I put the ice in. <laughs> it's you know. <laughs> what? I'm laughing at you. Sorry. Jeffrey Egan says, would you use a laser to cut pit guard material or CNC better? Um, we probably will not cut our own pit guards. Um, we're going to use the laser mostly for, well, a bunch of non-guitar related stuff. But also, the goal for the laser is going to specifically at first going to be to make our own flat work. So somebody asked about a Music Man bass. That's one of the products that I've been wanting to bring to market. I have a design for it. I have the wine counts all worked out. Uh, it's going to be different magnets than everybody else uses. It's good. They're going to be cool. Uh, you're not going to need a battery. They're, they're going to be strong and they're going to be awesome. And you're not going to need a preamp. Um, but I haven't been able to make the parts. So we will now be able to make our own parts. And so we will also... The, the main reason I bought the laser is so that we could make our own flat work. I think I have, you've heard me complain or lament or comment about um, not liking the consistency of quality of flat work for various pickups that we've had to deal with over the years. And the number of pickups that we're making now, there isn't one vendor that can keep up with me. And so at least in the space and scale that we are at, and I don't want to go to China for them. So, you know, we could go to China, we could have them made over there, but I can't, you know, I was having them made in Ohio by a guy, but then I was ordering a bunch and he couldn't keep up with his own business plus my own business. And I'm like, well, you know what? I need a laser. You know, I don't like the Mojo Tone stuff. I don't like the Stumac stuff's too expensive. I don't like, you know, there's a lot of things I don't like. And if I was going to make it myself, this is what I would do. And this is the sizes I would make. And this is how the holes would be cut and all this kind of stuff, um, which I was able to do for a while, but he couldn't keep up with me. And so um, we decided to buy a laser. And I was going to do it later this summer after we kind of recovered from painting and doing all the things to the house that we've been doing. Um, but this deal came up and I couldn't pass it up. So. Um, it's, it's going to be awesome. Once we get that done and once we get ourselves taken care of, I hope to sell pickup parts to others, all of you who are hobbyists and have learned how to wind pickups and that sort of stuff. Um, and then we'd like to do some other things too, guitar related. I don't want to get into all of that right now because I don't want to show my hand too soon, but we have a whole bunch of, you know, in order to justify the cost of something, you have to kind of think down the road about what is possible with it and decide if it's something that we want to do. And so we've given it a lot of thought and we've come up with a bunch of stuff. And then of course, you know, cutting boards and crap, like there's all kinds of things outside of, um, guitar stuff that, that we'll be able to make. So, and one of my friends told me today, he might even be watching that he's starting a 3d printing business. You were telling me about that earlier. So, oh yeah, you were in the car when we were talking about it. So, that might be cool for custom bobbins and stuff. Like plastic bobbins. Oh, yeah. Okay, we got to quit with the whatever you were talking about. Okay. <laughs> Sunflower says, what's the main difference in tone between two single coils wired in parallel and a single humbucker? Um, if you put them right next to each other, very little. But as you spread them apart, the um, frequency response changes and they sound less like a humbucker, but they sound like a split apart, far apart humbucker. For example, a Telecaster in series sounds sort of like a humbucker, but if you were to take those two single coils and then put them right next to each other, they would sound very much like a humbucker. It's the distance between the coils that changes that. Okay. Sarge978. Aside from being more complicated, why are jazz masters more popular than Jags? I always prefer Jags, even though I still don't completely understand them after owning one HH special for 10 years. Scale length. A lot of people don't like the shorter scale length of a Jag. They want a 25 and a half inch Fender scale guitar. That's why the Jazzmaster. 
New Gun Guy says, is it difficult to put an effects loop on a tube amp that comes without one? That is way above my pay grade. So for me, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lou York X says, I'd have figured Dylan would have used one of his pocket knives to cut pig guards. <laughs> I mean... We could. They'd look that, a little jaggedy, though. Yeah. Wouldn't really work. Patrick Jean LeBlanc Hardy. Rainia? Okay. May I ask, are you the artist of all the painting that is in many of the room's walls? If so, I love your art. Some of it. Some of it. Nothing mm -hmm. in here. Yeah, we don't have any. Actually, we don't really have any art up in the new house. But in it's the, all in a double air container. It is. <laughs> It's in mom's, it's in our room uh, next to the, yeah, it's in a big Tupperware container. Um, in our old house, the wall that you saw a lot of times behind me didn't actually have much of your art on it. We had other walls full of her stuff, mm -hmm. um, but we have a bunch of different, I, we collect it, so we have a bunch of different artists. They have like stuff from when I was like 11. Oh yeah, we had stuff when we were a little kid, for sure. Yeah. Vinny's World says, will you be engraving your signature with a laser going forward? No. I don't want to get away from doing it by hand. That's, I think that adds a lot of... It's a thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. With a router? What? I'm reading. Oh. Jeffrey Egan says, with a router head on the Dremel. Oh, maybe how do I do it now? I actually do it with a little tool engraver now. That I got at Harbor Freight for like 15 bucks. I actually wore one out and had to get another one. I'm making sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, good. No, that's great. Um, okay. Michael Davis said, P90 question. Do push-pull pots for polarity switching hurt guitar tone? Am I better off just flipping the magnets in one P90 and losing the option for the classic doinky middle position sound oh no definitely put a switch in but here's the thing if you order from us um you have to have a third wire on that pickup what i mean by that is um most p90s the negative is grounded to the chassis which means if you touch it it'll buzz so which is kind of hard not to do you'll do it at some point so if you want to do a series setup Put a note on your order that says, hey, I need a three wire and we'll put it on the neck pickup. We will put a hot, we'll put a positive and a negative and a separate ground for the chassis ground. And then that'll make it to where it doesn't buzz when you flip the wires with a switch. And I won't charge you an extra 15 bucks like Lawler ever does. I'll just do it. Rick Nelson said, what do you think of a Floyd Rose type string retainer instead of string trees on a Strat? Do you think that's less likely to bind? You know, I've tried it and I think it's more likely to bind because you don't actually need string trees on a Strat or a Tele except for on two strings, sometimes depending on a bunch of variables, thickness of the fretboard, height of the frets, um, all this kind of stuff. So why would you add friction by putting a bar across all six strings when only two strings will do sometimes? We have a super chat. Oh, excellent. Okay, go. Sarge978 said, short scale never bothered me. I really don't notice a huge difference. Maybe I'm just not sensitive to it or just too dumb to notice. Hey, man, it's punk rock. Just play it. And I agree. I like short scales too, uh, but they are a different feel. And I think maybe just because people, maybe because you don't make stuff up in your head, but maybe other people do. And they're just like, I can't play a 24 and a half inch or 24 inch scale guitar, you know, even though they really can. Um, some people get hung up on that stuff and then they are less popular as a result. And there are more for you. Dog dark to Tim. I'm not sure which part he's talking about. He said, speaking of your art, I love the painting on the wall behind you in your workspace. What is that? I don't know if he's talking. 
which not that one um painting in my workspace that is actually an artist oh you're busy well let's see the one that shows the most is actually Joan Jett and that one is an artist from Chicago her name is Amy I built her son a guitar. He plays in a punk rock band oh, in Chicago. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were I super cool. Them. They were super fun. Um, and so yeah, that's a that's an artist. She I have Prince. We have pillows. We have Prince, we have David Bowie, and we have Joan Jett. I'm a massive Joan Jett fan. I've have been for many, many years. So Dave S says, Do you follow the right hand rule when winding pickups? I don't know what that is. So probably not. You do ra- wa- la, 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 la. <laughs> wind with your right yeah, hand. Yeah, but I don't know if he's talking about maybe there's some sort of direction thing or if there's, I don't know what, because some people, okay, so you can wind them counterclockwise, you can wind them clockwise, you can, you know, there's a bunch of different ways mm-hmm. to do it, right? So we wind everything counterclockwise. Yeah. We um, do south up magnets on our bridge pickups, south up magnets on our screw sides. Um. So, you know, I don't know. I, we just kind of established it 10 years ago and just kind of have done it that way. And they sound great. So I guess it just doesn't really matter. I don't know. New gun guy says, I need, want, regular blank and aged pick guards. Who do you recommend? Thanks. Um, I can get you... I can't get you aged ones, but I can get you pretty much anything else. There was a guy on eBay that was really good. He was charging about 80 bucks or so, or right around 80 to a hundred dollars a few years ago to do like the mint pit guards that were aged. I can't remember what his name is though. My buddy bought a few of them and they were really, really good. Um, I can't remember what, what they're called. I don't remember the guy's name though. Mike Seedorf said, have you played the Futone? F-U-Tone. Okay. I, I didn't want to assume that's what it mm-hmm. meant. Um, Pro Electric Guitars, if you have, what is your thoughts on the instrument? Uh, I think they're cool. Everything Adam does is good. Uh, Adam Reaver is a good friend of mine, and I've known him for a long time. And um, he is very thoughtful and very intentional about the things that he sells of course, it's Mighty Might stuff, right? But uh, once it goes through his hands, it's very good. The stuff he makes is very good. I would buy. He's why I don't say Floyd Rose. Every time he was on my podcast one time, and we've hung out at NAM a bunch of times and stuff and other places and whatever. And every time I would say Floyd Rose, he would be like, I need to break you of the habit of saying <laughs> Floyd Rose. And I'm like, what? And he's like, it is double action tremolo. So I always say double action tremolo instead of Floyd Rose. Now. We have another super chat. Okay. Of a sticker. Oh, it's a sticker? Super sticker. Pair, Pair character. character exaggeratingly stretching his arm forward to offer a cup of coffee. Like this? Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. I think you had to do it a little more. Oh, like exaggerating, like, like, like exaggerating, <laughs> like take this. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. I appreciate that. Um, video Bruce says, any advice for using two different, two different pickup types on a guitar, say a P90 and a humbuck <laughs> buckler. Do you need to match impedance? Uh, no, not really. Um, I wouldn't worry about it too much because the frequency response of different pickups is different. The position of it is different. Now, Within reason, right? Like there are certain really high output pickups that are going to be super loud and they're going to hit your amp really hard. And if you put them next to a super low input pickup, you know, that our output pickup, that can be kind of a thing. But within reason, I wouldn't worry about it a whole lot. Jeremiah Volk. I was hitting a button because I'm trying something. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Jeremiah Volk says, what do you think of the new PJ singles? Uh, PJ singles. I don't know what that is. Who makes them? 
I don't know. Uh, chime in there again. <laughs> Dastardly Dave says wiggle stick. Yeah, tremolo. <laughs> yeah. Double action talent. Double action talent bar. That's pretty good. What the hell are they talking about? The tremolo. Like. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's all kinds of <laughs> dumb. I figured that's what it was when he said wiggle stick because that's the only part that wiggles outside <laughs> of the string. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it should be the only part that wiggles outside exactly. of the strings. Exactly. See, you know. I guess we're kind of caught up, huh? Yeah, the, we have five minutes. We have five minutes till we go off topic. Because we have a lot of things to catch them up on because we were, I was in Texas Toast. I was in Texas Toast in Colorado. <laughs> Wang bar. bar. Yeah. It's a boy guitar. <laughs> oh my God. Here we go. A whammy bar. Pearl oh. Jam singles. Oh. Uh, oh, you mean like the music? Oh, I think it's great. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, it's fantastic. I, um, that one song made like a number one billboard, on number one on the billboard charts. The first time since the 10 album or Vitology or something. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, we're big Pearl Jam fans around here. Choo Choo said, I recently tried Planet Wave and OMG. I can't believe those Mogami cables. Is that how you say that? I'll tell you it what. It makes me mad. i tell you what. You should try Runway Audio Cables. Use Dylan Tuck's tone as a discount code. You get 10% off, and you will never want to use that stuff again. Matthew Altamer says, did you ever pick that cable color scheme? I did. We're working on it. Yep. I did. We it are working on it. and anatomy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Somebody said my mind was in the gutter. Well, duh. I mean, yeah, sometimes... It's we'll be part of my stuff. humor. Sorry. And sometimes mom <laughs> will be talking about stuff and mom will just be like, oh my God, this is so dumb. Last week. It's bad when it's me and you like on the uh, same track. Last week at Texas Toast, somebody was bringing something up. I can't remember what it was. And it was, we were just all rolling on the floor laughing because it was really funny. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Jeffrey Egan. It's a super chat. Go ahead. It's five dollars. He said a tip for Brianna that she doesn't have to claim on her taxes. All right, there you go. <laughs> right on. I'll make sure she gets it. Thank you, Jeffrey. Hat Mike said, "Oh wait, Alien Talk." Um, <laughs> dog Nasty. doctor. Oh, dang it. Oh, please. You got it. It's cool. <laughs> Doctor Tim says, "Whammy bar, wang bar, wiggle stick, dive bar, and lots more." <laughs> yep, there's all kinds of names for that thing. All kinds of names. That's awesome. Oh wait, we have another super chat. Go ahead. Raf Freitas. I haven't seen his name before, so welcome and thank you for the super chat. It says, hi from Philly. I'm on the market for a vintage spec Firebird. Pickup. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pickup, do you offer with one wire braided shield and nickel covers? Any videos? Thanks. We do offer that. Um, I don't know if we have videos on that. Well, I, I offer that very same thing. If you order one, just put a note on there that that's what you want, that you want the braided wire and you want it to be kind of vintage spec like that. That's exactly what we'll do. Um, I have some artists out there that have more videos than I do, I think on this pickup, um, uh, my buddy that plays for run DMC and does a bunch of stuff with, um, Daryl McDaniels. He has been in guitar magazine and a whole bunch of other places in interviews. And that's all he uses is my P90 and my firebird pickups in his Gibson custom shop. He took the Gibson custom shop pickups out and put mine in there. Um, his are gold, but I can make yours in nickel and we can, we can totally pull that off. We have less than a minute. Excellent. <laughs> They're trying to kill me. It's like whether it's a wiggle stick or a hardtail, it's got to be mounted on a hardwood body. They're trying to kill me. Yeah, that's exactly what's <laughs> happening. That's what happens. That's what 
That's what happened. Jason Albert says, Brianna, you should have been in the live chat when we were carrying on about packages. I usually am, though. Even if I'm not, like, in here with y'all, Yeah. I'm in my room with the dog watching it. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, like, you... laughing my yeah. butt off. That's yeah. why I'm not often allowed out here. <laughs> yeah, usually she's too loud and distracting, laughing and giggling. Because it's funny. It is funny. If Oh, oh super chat. Okay. Awesome. <clears throat> Sarge978 might get myself banned, but I honestly haven't liked anything since 10. Not trying to be edgy. Just nothing has resonated for me. Uh, you know, okay. Are we talking about Pearl Jam? We're again? talking about Pearl Jam. Okay. Do you like anything after the 10 album? Exactly. Mm, I think that's fairly. Kind of. Kind of it's kind of universal. Is. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot of them are good. There's some good songs. Where's my off topic? Uh, I'll get it to you. Clicky. My clicky. Um, it is right. Because we have some of those, too. We have we to answer. we have some of those, yeah. And thanks for the super chat, Sarge. Yes, thank you. Okay, mm, so mm -hmm. it is 9 o'clock, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, but yeah, I think I think the Pearl Jam thing, just so I don't I don't want to gloss over his, his question. I think that's fairly... It's fairly Normal. universal, right? Like, I think most people are like, yeah, 10 was amazing. Vitology and Versus were, there were some good songs on those records. And then um, Eddie Vedder got kind of weird and did the ukulele record yeah. and did a whole bunch of different stuff. Now, if Leslie was in here, she would tell you opposite because she would tell you all the different various projects he was on and why she likes this and that because she's a huge Pearl Jam fan. We have another super chat. Excellent. From, from Sarge. Mm -hmm. Says also the correct answer is dime bag squealy rod. <laughs> oh my God. That's really funny. That's like basic song ever. Like everybody knows that song. Even flow. Yeah. No, exactly. Okay. Pearl Jam versus. That's a good. Yeah. No, it's good. I mean, those are good. They're just, you know, they're just not amazing. Um... Okay, let's do the two. Yeah, I gotta find. There's three of them, right? Uh, nope, just two. Just two. Yep. Uh, let's see. So here's the question: Do you buy your coffee by the pound or by the kilogram? <laughs> P.S. This does not need to be answered on stream, especially given the context of the clip above. Oh, because I put a clip with this question today that's really funny we usually buy it by the pound we ran out of coffee and actually had to buy ground coffee today which was stupid but anyway so uh if you're wondering what's the off topic hour thing here's the deal we are uh it's after nine o'clock so we do this every week we go off topic and we just hang out with you this is how we get to know you and become friends as best we can through the interwebs um you can ask any question you want, and we'll probably answer it. If you ask a guitar question after 9 o'clock, it has to be in a super chat. We will not answer guitar questions after 9 o'clock unless they're in a super chat. If you feel you got missed earlier, show up earlier next week, and we will handle your guitar question next week. We do have one more. Uh, yeah, another. I think it's just a kind of an acknowledgement thing, but we'll check it out. This is from Patreon. Off topic. Yep. Hello, Leslie and Dylan. Thank you for hanging out this evening with us from Charles. Thanks, Charles. Even though it's me and Brianna instead of me and Leslie tonight, but that's okay. Nobody <laughs> knew that. We did it last. Oh, she's up. She heard it. She's she heard y'all talking trash about Pearl Jam. Is that is that what it is? Yeah, it woke her. <laughs> it woke her from her like Slumber. sleeping beauty, dead out sleep. Like, wait a minute. Somebody discussed something about Pearl Jam. Can you come in here a second or are you not up to it? Okay. Huh. So we're we're in the off topic hour now. Yeah. And one of the somebody Full said reversal. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said, uh, we're talking about good records. Is there anything good after 10? Somebody was like, I don't want to be like strung up in a public square or whatever, but I don't <laughs> feel like there is anything good after 10. And I was like, and Le and Brianna was like, yeah, it's kind of universal. Like 10's pretty awesome. But we have a oh, super chat. We have a super chat. Go ahead. From Vinny's World. 
Congrats on the laser. I hope Leslie gets well soon. And thanks, Brianna, for co-hosting. P.S. Dylan, I sent you a message about an order on the old Patreon messaging thing. Thanks. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. I'll check it out, Vinny. I appreciate it. He's in Hong Kong, so we're always having to, like, deal with, um, like, across the world time zones. Every time somebody says that, I always go to, like, the old cartoon, the Hong Kong Four. Oh, okay. So, uh... <laughs> So, is, uh, there, is, there, is there anything other than the 10, uh, after the 10 album that you think is awesome? There's nothing better than the 10 album. Okay. But I really did like Vitalogy. You like Vitalogy. Okay. Um, what about some of his weirder stuff? I mean, I have the ukulele album. <laughs> told you. <laughs> I told you. That was like... And he better get weird, and then he went on this, like, the whole ukulele yeah. thing. <laughs> no, I have the ukulele album. Do you like it? I like maybe two songs. Okay, so it's pretty universal. Okay, so we're we're on to something. Somebody said your Pearl Jam senses were tingling. Yeah. Somebody said, Leslie, I hope you're feeling better. She's like, somebody said something about Pearl Jam. Right. I'm up. <laughs> super, so another super chat. You gotta hit the button. Okay, go. Sarge9788 says, don't tell her it was me, but I stand by what I said. Also, email, email about the angry spaghetti scent. They're actually both super sweet. Oh, okay. Excellent. So uh, Sarge, I was reconnecting with Sarge since we're talking about off-topic stuff about the snake because um, we were literally at a reptile show <laughs> talking to one of our local... It's, you know, going to reptile shows can be sketchy, right? But we actually have... A local person that's a breeder and they're really cool and you know they raise their own feeders in fact i'm getting feeders from them tomorrow they're like super legit you know and they had a snake there and i was like hmm i really want to get a snake but sarge said he had a snake the magic power of eddie made the sickness go away <laughs> yep um and so we're like well we're gonna get more than one snake so we'll talk to sarge about another snake but I'm going to get a steak. So I got a mail. Um, he's in there. He's very nocturnal right now. He's like not coming out at all. He was very awake this morning. Was he? Because by the time I got up, I couldn't, I didn't see him. He was up when I got up. Was he? Yeah. He was up when you were up. He yeah, I got out of bed. bed at like nine o'clock and he's just he sitting there chilling. Him, and apparently. Bandit was like. I mean, when that? I got up, when I got up. Cause I had to leave early to go get the laser and, um, the laser. But he was awake when I came in here and had coffee with you. Oh, was he? Oh, I must've. Okay. He was yeah. way awake when I was making pancakes. Well, I was gone by then. Well, well that's, that's cool. Good. Cause I was like, why is he awake right now? Yeah. No, that's cool. Is he up now? I doubt it. Probably Are not. the lights still on? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, oh, his aren't. Why was that funny? I don't know. <laughs> because I thought everybody knew I was talking about lizard lights, and you're like, yeah, no. <laughs> the reptile lights. We have the reptile lights on, like, super fancy plugs now that go on and off automatically and stuff. What are the questions we got there, Martin Brianna? Murray says fried chicken or barbecue chicken. It definitely says Martian. Martian, whatever. Um, Fried chicken or barbecue? Well, I mean, barbecue can be fried, too, so... So fried either way. Definitely fried chicken. Yeah. Okay. Um. Wow, that's creepy. That's the same thing I do. <laughs> Nobody's been calling, like saying Leslie got younger or, um, what was the other one? Mini you. Yeah. And Dad tried to come up with a word, and I don't remember what it was. I was like, Leslie's progeny is um. Subbing. <laughs> Subbing tonight, yeah. Oh, Martian Marie says, oh, wait, forget y'all are vegan. Is Brie vegan? Maybe she could answer fried or barbecue chicken. I'm definitely not vegan. No. And she already answered. Fried chicken. Fried chicken. Which is probably, of all the food that we have to keep in stock. Uh, for me. <laughs> it's fried chicken. We have to keep chicken around for her. Because you're not a beef person, really. At all. Yeah. Mm -mm. And... It's not deer season. Right. 
Yep. Um, Dog Doctor Tim says, Leslie, I'm glad you're feeling better. You look good for feeling bad. It's because I had like what a four hour nap or something. Mm-hmm. Those are always. Good. Oh, we should let everybody know. Um, we should tell everybody. So we have a lot of developments in the pet arena. Yeah. Because we have a python named Chester. Um, She's out. <laughs> she's going to enjoy her evening off. Um, Which means she got two weeks in a row off, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we got a python named Chester. Of course, you have your... I have Rue. Be- oh, well, you have your bearded dragon, but she also got... I don't want to try to get her. No, don't. Because um, she's going to scream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She got a... Uh, what is that thing called? A sugar glider? Yeah. And she's obnoxious. She's crazy. Yeah, she's crazy. She is a marsupial that is only awake and loud at night. She woke me up at 6 o'clock this morning. Really? Until I told her good night. Really? Because mm-hmm. the sun was starting to come up and she started barking at me. Mm-hmm. I was like, Rue, you can go to bed. Good night. And then she stopped. And like I heard her burrow and that was it. Oh, really? I'm like. Yeah, she definitely is a communicator for sure. Yes. And wants to be communicated with. Except with you. That was and so She does funny. not like me, though. <laughs> I get closer to her. I get close to her and she flips out and starts barking at me. Like she makes these crazy noises, man. It's It's crazy. So I thought yeah. it was great. <laughs> she jumped at everything the first I time. I freaked you out. Her. I was like, whoa. Yeah. She did not like me. I thought it was great. Um Sarge978 says, who makes the superior pistol and why is it Agent K? You know, I don't have an Agent K. I need to get one. I don't think I've heard of them. They're a German brand. They're That's really I nice. I would like to get a VP9, or actually what I really would like to get is a P30. <laughs> Um, but I haven't gotten around to it. It's just something I've not gotten around to. I am in the process of building a couple more rifles. Well, I'm in the process of building a couple more pistols. I bought two, um, AR lowers and we're going to do a nine millimeter and a 300 blackout. Jason Albert says, Dylan, now that you have a laser, are you going to capture James Bond next? Oh yeah. I'm going to put a laser in my watch. Victoria she said fried chicken isn't gluten free. Oh, she might not be able to eat it. Yeah. And what else we got? Let's see. New gun guy says H and K knives has an auto model called Ballista XL HK are made from Hogue Me Wants knife. Yes, actually, I have a Hogue right over here. That's the one you were just we were just talking about before the show. The yellow one that you can mm, see through. Mm-hmm. That's a Hogue, and I really, really like it a lot. Um, it's Victoria G says I appreciate Bree being the meat connoisseur of the channel. Yeah, pretty much. Um, ninety four Dodge dude says, "Hey guys, favorite bourbon?" Ooh, so uh, my favorite bourbon that I. Just buy on, just to have in stock and drink. This is scotch, but um, bourbon, I typically really enjoy oh, Jefferson's Ocean. I missed it. Missed a super chat? Hold, 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 please. Jefferson's Ocean. John Stitt uh-huh. says, I am drinking coffee. What are you people having? Water and some scotch. And you're having... I had vanilla Coke. But vanilla that's Coke, but it's gone. Water. And water. There you go. Um, Chris Walker said sugar gliders are escape artists. Mm-hmm. I don't think she is. Is that why you had to spend like two hours fishing her out of the couch? No, that was because I'm obnoxious and didn't listen to mom. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, he also said, Sarge978 says, I've heard sugar gliders are brutal to care for feeding wise. Does she do good? She, she eats, right? She eats a lot. Really? And it... Goes everywhere. She's, She's very messy. messy. Yeah, very messy. Doc Siltonen says, "Are you not worried about the python trying to eat the sugar glider?" They're in two different rooms. <laughs> yeah, completely separate. Yeah, yeah. And you only hold them, handle them separately. Separately. Yeah. Um. We actually have a stack because we have 
The python is on the bottom and the lizard is on the top. Yeah, you put the animal that the short girl has to get to up higher. You know, I didn't actually think of that. Oh, wait, I did. We have to. Yeah, because of his lights. Because of his lights mm -hmm. are different, yeah. Well, that's okay. We have chairs. Jeffrey Egan says, sugar gliders aren't in the squirrel family. No, they're a marsupial. Are they? So what family like, are they in? It's It's like a koala like it just looks like a squirrel it's like a chinchilla and a koala oh okay because they have the yes it is yes oh i mean i don't know <laughs> because they can't like they don't have the huge pouches i mean kangaroos don't carry their babies around forever and they're marsupials i'm looking this crap up <laughs> We have a veterinarian in the... He probably doesn't know about koalas, though. Dog Dr. Tim wants to meet Bandit. I could see that. Hold, please. It It is. He's sleeping. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's um, not wake him up, because then he'll go nuts. I, next time when he's awake, I will make sure you can meet him. Yeah, it says that it is an herbivore... An herbivorous marsupial. Well, they're not herbivores. No. Oh, koalas. you're talking about koalas. Yeah. I was like, I didn't, um, I didn't know that. I have no clue. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. care really. So. Okay. Another super chat. Oh. Okay. Go. Sarge978 says, have owned a couple dozen pistols over the years. My VP9 will be buried with me. I meant more Meet so. More so. Oh, meant more so. <laughs> Meeting their nutritional needs. Um, no, because I did a lot of research on her from the car to home. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even before I got her. It was like, I'd wanted one since I was little. And I was like, yes, I'm having one. Yeah. And then I panic Googled the whole way home. <laughs> well, you've been doing a lot of, she's, she, Brianna is a very conscientious, uh, pet owner and she has been doing like, you know, lots about your lizard too. Like you, I know you, lots about all of the things. Yeah. You do pretty well with figuring it out and it's taken some, there has been a learning curve with her <laughs> because she is so different from anything else we have, but yeah. she is, she is very neat and she's, she's not really as cool, complicated yeah. as people make them out to be. And Brianna is really good at learning the stuff. So I've, it seems to be, it seems to be. The way I acquired her was quite interesting, too. Yeah. <laughs> Lefty O said, critters have been known to escape and meet in the middle. Snake might find the glider sweet. We are not irresponsible pet owners, so that's not even a concern. Yeah, I don't think that'll happen. The only animal that runs around is, well, the dog. The dog obviously. and Rango. But the we do let the lizard out. Um, but the lizard will also beat up my dog. Yeah, true. Yeah, they actually look out for each other. Bandit will go find Rango if he ends up somewhere he's not supposed to be. Yep. So I don't worry about them at all. Um, Jason Albert says possums are the only native marsupial in the United States. I did know that. And they are native to here. Native to the side of the road a lot of times. Apparently so are birds. <laughs> yeah. Brianna killed a bird. Day I didn't today. mean to. <laughs> okay. Um, we're not going to make me cry about birds. Um, it's Victoria G said koalas have chlamydia. They do. Why is that known? <laughs> like. I don't know. Uh -uh. Yeah. Um, new gun guy says the Hogue exemplar looks like a neat little knife. Me also want. Yeah, I could definitely have a few hogs. I don't I don't only have the one actually. Um I wanted it because of the Altim scales that it has, but I then I got it and I started carrying it. And I'm like, ooh, man, this thing's really, really nice. Um I would say that I have a hogue deco with Magna Cut and it's a black blade with uh Altim scales, and I would definitely say that that knife is better than a bug out um it's very good you have a knife tonight too and we should talk about that knife actually so 
this knife, go ahead. And this knife is a uh, Sen cut, and it's a uh, which is a Civivi Wee brand, kind of their budget brand. But this was a gift um, to me from somebody. <laughs> Joe, I think, is his name. He sent it to Texas Toast Guitars and had it there waiting for me for a few months, actually. Um, and then I went there and, and picked it up uh, last week. And um, Brianna is carrying it. <laughs> so really quick, Dog Doctor Tim says, I panic Google at work all the time. Not comforting to me personally, yeah. but he's a bit. <laughs> um, and then I need you to hit the button. Okay. Sarge978 says, so Brianna is a birderer. I'll see myself out. Technically, it is not my fault because birds have the ability to fly and the mofo just wouldn't freaking fly. <laughs> and you just hit it. I just like. <laughs> <laughs> Did it make that noise too? I don't want to know. I didn't listen. <laughs> it covered my ears and I started crying because I saw. I looked in my mirror and of course, there's this huge pickup truck behind me. And I'm like, well, if I didn't kill it, he's going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then, of course, like, I look in the mirror and it's just feathers. Nice. I'm like. <laughs> so I went into work and all my eyes are all puffy and all the work I did to my make gone. Nice. Doc, oh, wait. Doc Siltonen says, I know what you mean. What the hell is that? I'll be back in a minute talking about Dog Dr. Tim. Yeah. He's a dentist. Um, so, you know, that's... Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> we all have Google degrees. That's what yes. it is. Except me. Mom used to fuss at me about that all the time. She's like, Google is a thing, Brianna. Yep. Google it instead of call me and ask me about it. But it's... She's my mom. Yeah, it's true. BDL05. 550 says, I jump onto the stream and the first word I hear is chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Timing is a wonderful thing. Yeah, timing is good. <laughs> Doug Sultan said, yep, off topic. <laughs> of, well, I, I think he meant off topic. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm trying to think of anything <sighs> else we should update them on. So, uh, speaking of lasers. So... We ordered, there'll be, an, it'll be in next week. Um, we have a normal, uh, you'll see, cause I'm going to put it in videos and we're going to, we'll, we'll show you, but, um, we have a 21 by 22. I should know this cause I ordered flooring for it today. Um, 21 by 22 garage, you know, just a normal two car garage really. Um, so I ordered, uh, what is it? Race deck, whatever that flooring stuff is and it's going to be a red and gray checkerboard which is going to be sweet and we got um i had not painting the cabinets anymore right no we're not gonna paint the cabinets okay. i had a, a shop before in the dirt bike days where we had a, a a garage and we carpeted it but i didn't really like the carpet because you would spill stuff on it and be hard to clean it up so that's why i went with with the interlocking floors instead um but i don't like bare concrete I like to be able to go out there in my socks or in my bare feet. So um, that that's pretty cool. So we we're doing that. And then we got uh, in my old shop, I had many years ago, I had kitchen cabinets instead of garage cabinets because then you have a proper countertop. So we bought 10 feet of base cabinets and a 10 foot countertop, a normal 27 inch normal countertop. And then 10 feet of upper cabinets so that we can have proper storage and staging. And then what we're going to do is put pegboard or slat wall in between, probably slat wall, in between uh, the cabinet and the countertop. And then that's going to be all of our staging area for a lot of our retail parts. So as we start stocking more and more and more stuff, we're going to have this whole long wall full of stuff and cabinets to stage it all in. And... Um, and then I ordered a bunch of steel cabinets to go on the other side to handle chemicals, keep all that separate, handle all that stuff. Um, and then the laser 
is going to go on the opposite side of the garage. You'll see once we start doing it all, because I want to share it with you all, because it's really cool. Um, but there's a window over there, and I got a vent fan with it and a 12-inch ho- twelve inch vent hose and all that stuff. So it's going to be super, super cool setup. Really excited about it. So Tom F. says, tried some Caribbean moonshine today and damn, peanut butter and chocolate. Huh. That sounds like, I mean, I like moonshine, but that just sounds like the kind that would make your spit like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Mm -hmm. thick. Mm -hmm. We've had some flavored moonshine. I just never really, it's just never been a thing for me. I'm not from the South though, so. I like apple punch. It's too sweet for me. I love it. It's too sweet for me. Okay. Lefty O said, any of that garage flooring ain't cheap, race deck, et cetera. Yeah, race deck. That's what it is. Uh, I got it on clearance for like half off. I was going to paint. Uh, I was going to use epoxy. And um, then I started, I decided to put kitchen cabinets in out there. And I was like, no, I want this stuff off the concrete. I'm like, well, I could just shim it up off the concrete. Then that'd be stupid. And I'm like, well, maybe I'll put race deck on one side. That would be stupid. So I was Googling around where it said, it just got in my head. We're waiting to get a table today for lunch. Mm -hmm. And um, I was Googling around. I'm like, oh, wow, they have a bunch on clearance. And they only had a few colors left on clearance. And one of them was, you know, and our company colors are gray and red. So I was like, oh, well, awesome. So it ended up being only, I mean, a few bucks more than painting it. You know, because really good epoxy and all the stuff, you're going to have six or seven. And it takes forever to dry. Well, that's the problem, is it takes like two weeks. Because Mm -hmm. by the time you wash it, let it dry. Acid, let it dry. Mm -hmm. Like all the stuff, it takes like a couple, maybe not a couple weeks. But I mean, it takes, especially because the humidity here, it takes a long time. So I'm like, screw that. So it was only a couple hundred bucks more to use race deck because I got it on clearance. I'm like, we're just going to do that because we'll have that done in a couple hours. You know, that's that's easy. Sarge978 said two stroke or four stroke. I will judge you on your answer. Um, you're probably going to say two stroke. Um, I came up in the four stroke uh, in my when I was, you know, in the power sports industry. Four strokes were dominating two stroke stuff, but we still had two stroke stuff around. So, uh, if you look back through my old old Facebook pictures, you'll see, you know, we built um, we built some stuff for Max Power, some stuff for some two stroke stuff. Um, there's nothing like the smell of Klotz two stroke oil. I mean, when you go to the races, like when you go to the Supercross. And you used to smell that and you just don't smell that anymore. But four strokes are where it's at. I mean, you know, that's what I, I know, no, no four stroke stuff. And that's what I designed cylinder heads for. That's what I did airflow and carburation for. That's what I did fuel injection for. That's where my whole business was. So I really love four stroke stuff. But that being said, I always had a two stroke around because there's nothing like them. Um... BLD0550 says mm-hmm. definitely slat wall. Yeah, I think so. I agree. <clears throat> it's more expensive, but it works better. Jason Albert says slat wall is so much better than pegboard. Mm-hmm. Blue York eggs says and snacks. Snacks go in the kitchen cabinets even if they're in the garage. Exactly. We have a fridge in the garage, too. It's my fridge. For Cokes. <laughs> for... for uh, not vegan food. Frozen rats. Speaking of not vegan oh, food. That's, that's, all, gonna go in my that's all going in that freezer in the garage. <laughs> yeah. I want to do a slat wall right here. You guys can't see it because it's not YouTube friendly, but right here there's <laughs> rifles and pistols all on the wall, and I think I'm going to put slat wall there too. Um, Tom F. said it's rum-based. It was mellow. I don't want to think of moonshine, yeah, moonshine as is mellow, moonshine. though. Yeah, moonshine it's is like, moonshine. I want moonshine you have to, to understand. hurt. Yeah, we're in the South. Yeah, exactly. We're in the South. So moonshine 
comes from you your buddy's dad's backyard to light in the it shed. on fire and it burned blue. <laughs> exactly. Your buddy's dad has some in the shed and that he cooked in a hole in the yard. Exactly. And exactly. That is moonshine. And it you only drink out of it out of, out of a ball mason jar. With a rusty lid. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it is. That's, like, that's legit, man. Unless that's... I have to use WD forty to get the lid off. <laughs> <I don't want laughs> to drink it. <laughs> oh wow, that's hilarious. Just, <sighs> oh, that's so maybe it's not the moonshine. Maybe it's actually the WD forty. Maybe. I don't know. <clears throat> I never thought about the WD forty aspect. It that part was a joke. That's funny. I know. I know. I know. Ooh. Okay, super chat. And you hit the button. Yep, go. So indeed going to say two stroke. You've got a pretty good read on me from our limited interaction. Two stroke for life. Also analog is better with digital. I'm not nearly as old as I know I sound. Oh dude, I agree with all those things. I think and it's funny, I you know, I, I get a lot of crap for that stuff, but I for you know, well, just for you know, being having all the digital stuff and all the carbon fiber stuff and all the new stuff and i like my new car i mean i do i like i like new things but i also like really old things and i think they're really cool i mean and that's why we have i mean i write with fountain pens for goodness sakes oh i got my first vintage fountain pen this week too i got this is a um late 60s mont blanc model 220 I got this imported from Japan, and it is amazing. I actually, and next week, I will be getting, it's coming, it's on the way. I got two Cold War era communist pens. So if you want to talk about old stuff, I really like Cold War era stuff and really interesting war and battle history stuff. So I got a pen from North Korea on the way. Uh, that was made in the 60s. And I got a Soviet pen that is made in 1959 that it's made to commemorate the Sputnik launch. And it looks like a rocket. And I'm really excited to get that too. Uh, okay, let's see. you're laughing about something. Over I'm there. laughing about a lot. These people are funny. Um, Jason Albert says, fridge in the garage is for beer. None of us drink beer. Yeah, we don't really drink that much beer around here. But we do stock it out there for when other people come over. Yes. Tom F. says, I might need to send you a bottle. It was strong. Well, I'll never say no. I'll try it. I to mean, trying. Yes. Sean McMillan says, frozen food doesn't cross-pollinate. It. I know that, but I don't want dead rats around my food. It's just a... <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, let's see. Lefty O says, no, rollback moonshine is pretty smooth. It is true. Sometimes? Sometimes. It, it depends how old it is. That doesn't mean the moonshine I had, the guys were good at making it. No, that's true, too. Um, and it depends how old it is. Because mm -hmm. older moonshine, when it starts to cross over almost into that bourbony kind of range, yeah. and the corny taste starts to go away a little better, it is a little smoother. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are impatient about their moonshine and it ends up tasting like like rubbing sp alcohol, spicy whiskey and rubbing alcohol mix, uh, spicy corn and because it's corn. So I know what it is. It, you know, <laughs> BDL 0550 said flavor enhancer. I'm assuming he's talking about the WD-40. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> dog, 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 silt. Tenen says you got to shake moonshine before you take a drink. That way, if the batch isn't perfect, you'll only get sick instead of glowing blind. Lots of <laughs> shine in my past. Yeah, that's really <laughs> funny. Hitting the button. Go ahead. Super chat from Sarge978 says, got my rats next to the bagel bites. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> that is your deal, man. <laughs> I. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I can't even like smell hamburger grease where I'm like, Ugh. so I really don't want to look at the dead rats before I take out my chicken patty. <laughs> that is hilarious. And it's the same color as my shrimp. Like that's gonna, like, what if he put one in the bag? Maybe what if he's screwing with me? Maybe you should second guess what you are eating. 
No. Because the snake is meant to eat that. I can eat. I don't eat nearly the stuff I'm not supposed no, to eat I know, anymore. I know, I know, I know. I'm teasing. I don't care. <laughs> Um, Dog Dr. Sim says, Brianna, it's hilarious. Please come back again. <laughs> um, I've been playing bass for... Oh, nope. That's not a super chat for the guitar question. You need a Voss talk? You still need a Voss talk? What is that? Um, Dave, I do still need a Voss talk. You know what's funny to watch? It is from Russia. Oh. Um, I Here's the thing about russia stuff i want russian stuff but now i want to be very intentional that it is pre um i i really would rather have soviet stuff because i don't want to have any kind of connection to anything over there right now but i would like to have some soviet stuff for sure I really want a Soviet gun. Uh, Stu Crombie says, I'm crazy on dark rum. I can't touch it. Someone said you're a pirate. Freaking lethal to me. I go crazy. That's fun. That's, hmm, that's weird. What kind of rum? How much rum? Well, I mean, could a woodchuck chuck? Oh, no. Um, I mean, it depends, too. Like, Bacardi 151 is like, Oh, yeah. You can light it on fire. BLD0550 said paint thinner. Jason Albert says, Brianna, you can use frozen rats to make distortion guitar pedals. Mm -mm. So you can, um, well, a rat is actually a guitar pedal. There's a there's a model called a rat. Proco made it a long I thought time. the rats were too big. I thought we had to feed them mice. No, oh, they are. They're little, they're little feeder mice. Okay. But Everybody's talking about rats. They um she sizes them by you know by grams. That's how that works. Uh I don't know if that's a question we can do or if we're waiting. Oh yeah, go ahead. Okay. New gun guy says, Are you into autofill gear? Audiophile? Audio why is everything spelled weird? Just spell it like normal people. I'm embarking on a mission to slow put a system together. Pretty much a bunch of shit stiff into kills blah, speakers. Some kind of speaker. Oh, clips. Um, I, you know, I don't claim to be an audiophile because once I do, and then I tell you what I have, people are going to be like, that's not real audiophile stuff. Um, but I do have um, very good consumer stuff. Uh, I currently have Martin Logan uh, front channel speakers. I do not have electrostatics. I would really like to have a set of electrostatics at some point. Um, so I have, but I do have the really good Martin Logan uh, folded ribbon tweeters in my my Martin Logans. Um and I have a Denon receiver that is very, very, very good. Um, I do not currently, well, we have a, is that an Audio Technica turntable that you have? I can't remember the. I think so. Yeah, it's an Audio Technica turntable. Um, I used to have a Focal turntable and I sold it um, when we moved before. So I'll probably get another really good turntable and a separate turntable amp. We we'll um, have to find a way to connect that one to the speakers. Though. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll because we do have a bunch of vinyl and stuff. So that's she does and I do and um, I used to have more audiophile stuff, but I just I don't know. It, it's so cool, but at the same time. What do I use my Martin Logans for? Watching friggin' YouTube. So, like, I don't know. I listen to music on earbuds and on headphones all the time. I listen to mine on a Bose speaker when y'all are talking. Well, <laughs> you did get your phone paired to that finally, right? So you can use the living room <laughs> system. It's way better, huh? And when y'all aren't here. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, I don't care if I am here. I know it's great. Um, 
I do need to get a sub though. We don't currently have a sub in the living room. So um, that needs to happen. I'm probably just going to buy the matching Martin Logan motion 50 <clears throat> or 80, whatever it is that goes with the stuff that I've got. Um, so yeah, I, I love that stuff. I just have, have, have been investing things in other things like guns and whiskey. Dog Dr. Tim says good authentic moonshine is like a velvet hammer. I agree with that. That's makes sense. That's yeah. Fair, fair assessment. Doc Siltonen says I have a Vostok and a Slava. So uh I'll tell you. He mm, probably the easiest way to say it right now in this context is he has family mm, from mm -hmm. Russia. And um and so he has a lot of yeah, that connections makes sense, to, to, to Russia. Yeah. Jason Albert says, so you're not Russian to get Russia stuff? I uh, not. Mm -mm. Vanny's World says, flaming Lamborghinis. I don't know what that is. Like, never, I can't use that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, Lefty O says, I used to love me a big old bottle of 151 Chaser with a case of beer, and it used to be a good time. Whoa. Like a shot before every beer and a case of beer? You're going to die. I mean, he's alive now. His liver. How is his liver? <laughs> In a little cart that he pulls behind him, probably. <laughs> or he's on a list, like waiting. For a new one? Yeah. <laughs> Jeffrey Egan says, I don't have a Slava, but I'm not a collector except for guitars. Oh, Jeffrey Egan. So Jeffrey Egan's cool. I met him. Um, we met him in Ohio somewhere when we were traveling. Mm -hmm. And he, I don't remember exactly why. It has to do with his military service, I think, if I recall. But he speaks Russian and like knows a bunch of cool That'd stuff. That'd be really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a cool dude. Tom F says I got an old Nagant Nagant revolver. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So there's a website um, called Atlanta. You probably already heard of it. And if you're a real gun nerd, you probably I know you've heard of it. Um, but there's a, a website called Atlantic Firearms, and they import a bunch of weird stuff. Um, Bulgarian makarovs and like all these kind of weird stuff it's where i got my ptr i have a g3 uh 16 inch 308 right here um <clears throat> and uh it's a ptr that's made here in the states but it's a it's an hk clone okay you have to hit the button and that's where i got <clears throat> it and so they have all a bunch of that weird stuff and you should check it out if you're into that weird stuff go sarge 978 said poster boy pastrana or metal Militia? Um, so here's the thing is that is my era. And that is, I know all those guys. And so I can't really love one over the other. Um, they're all really awesome dudes. Um, and so I, I don't know. I like all of them. Travi P's cool guy. And so is, uh, Ryan, yeah. Jeffrey Egan says, "Are that still the top dogs?" Kills clips. Clips. Um, probably yeah. not. But in a, in the consumer stuff that you could buy at Best, it's probably like the best stuff you can get at Best Buy for sure. Yeah, I would say. Um, Lefty O said, "No, drink the bottle, chase it with beer after the bottle is empty." Live is great. <laughs> I heard mom. Did you hear mom go? Ooh. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> it was but only there was one only dog. one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's an inside family joke, but so we won't get into that. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. That's only one. There's only one. <laughs> it's not that bad then. Mm -mm. <laughs> Doc Sildenen says, when you come to visit, I will show you the Soviet battle flag that Elena's grandfather carried with him from Stalingrad to the German border. Whoa, that's so cool. This fountain pen. Oh, dude, that's so cool. There's a lot of cool that stuff at Don's neat. house. I want to go to visit Don. Don, actually. Are we 
talking about the same people? Is his name Doc? Doc Don? Filton. In, his name is Don. Yeah. Oh, I was like, that's his Doc. Doc. Yeah, but Doc is because he's a dentist. He's a doctor. Well, yeah, but I didn't know his real name was Don. Don. Um, I, I'll get I'll get with you in the next few days. Or I'm I'm trying to figure out a an itinerary this summer, and you might be on it. Lou York exits 100 beer clubs, 100 beers in a weekend. Mm, not me. I've done 48. I've done about 100 in a weekend before. You, back in your younger days. Yeah. My poor life decisions your, era. <laughs> your poor life decisions era. Um, <clears throat> Lefty O said, good CNR gun days were 20 years ago. Russian stuff was dirt cheap, especially if you had a CNR FFL. Yeah, dude, for sure. You know what's crazy? I was thinking about that the other day because uh, I was like, I really want an AK. I don't have an AK. So I was shopping around for a, shopping around for an AK. And because um, I really want, I really want a, a Yugoslavian one. Back in the day, the Romanian and Yugoslavian ones were like the crappiest ones, right? And you could get one. You could get an AK for like $250. And a Chinese one you could get for like $150. Yeah, but that's before everybody went stupid. Yeah. And now a good AK is $1,300. Bucks. Mm hmm. Oh, I know. Me too. Doc Siltonen says it's really cool, full of blood stains and bullet holes. What? Oh, yeah. I've got to see that. I've I want pictures. That. If y'all go that. without me, I want. I've got to see that. Oh, yeah, y'all are going to have to go without me. Uh, hit the button. I did. Okay. Sarge978 says, definitely all seems like great guys for sure. Travis and I are the same age, so doing what he did so young was an inspiration for us when we were young, but always been rebellious, so was partial to Deegan. Yeah, Brian Deegan. Okay. So you know Haley Deegan, who drives uh, Xfinity race cars now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Brian Deegan's daughter. Right. Brian Deegan and I are very close to the same age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Brian is a really nice guy. Doc Sultan and says, you need a Soviet flask. Oh, yes. And he, Don, text me a picture again of whatever the Soviet, the Russian teapot thing is. You should... Uh, He'll, he'll text me. He has them. They're really pretty. And I really want to get one. Um, Dastardly Dave. Da Jesus. Dastardly Dave says if you get an AK, you need an SKS. Yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, geez. It's almost 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. We've been cranking. You guys? I mean, I hate to cut it off. We still have 69 people. We're having really super amounts of fun tonight. Uh, thank you to my lovely co-host, Brie. You pointed Anna. at yourself when you did that. Do you know that? <laughs> no, you did a good job, man. No, I appreciate your uh, management of this. Uh, it was really good. We did. Just lack of being able to talk. We did a good job. Well, they kept you laughing. That's what it's all about. <laughs> they That's did. why These, we they do were this. Funny. That's why we do this is because about marsupials and chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's why we do this because it's so fun to just, you know, we talk about guitar stuff. Yeah, that's why we're all here. But um, learning all these other things is really fun. And Doc Silton and said Samovar. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to actually write that down. Is cool. he awake? Excellent. Well, you guys, this has been super fun. Uh, I'm going to put another video out tomorrow. <laughs> in the I don't know what that means. In the late in the afternoon. Sarge, Brianna what does that mean? I don't Brianna understand 2024. what that means. Um, I think it means you're going to be co-hosting with me more often. Probably not all the time, but probably sometimes. Well, I mean, y'all are stuck with me. It's like I live here. Yep. It's true. Uh, speaking of off-topic stuff. Your video will come out. I'm going to make another video about the Texas Toast stuff for tomorrow. But it will come out late in the day. 
because Brianna and I are going to Atlanta in the morning. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> we are getting up early and going to Atlanta in the morning for the Atlanta Pen Show. Super nerdy. Jason Albert says, I prefer the off-topic hour. BLD says, sometimes you just got to break outside the box. That's right. Our family doesn't have a box. Nope. Not really. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, you guys. We will see you tomorrow.